I'm sure he has been buzzed in sparring, not just by Daniel Dubois, but by various different people. Danny Gathorn here for Pro Boxing Fans. Delighted to be joined by Zoom all the way from Las Vegas. Eddie Hearn, Eddie, how are we doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you? All good, all good. A few technical issues, but we've got there in the end. Before we come on to, obviously, you're in Vegas for Canelo Berlanga. Show this Friday night that's uh, gone a bit yeah. under the radar. Uh, uh, Rocky Hernandez uh, back in the ring uh, against Thomas Matisse. I mean, Rocky versus... Um, Oshaki Foster last year is one of the best fights I watched all year. Crazy round eleven, and I've not watched much of Thomas Matisse, but judging by his record, only seems to know to go forward. A, yeah, I'll tell you, like it's funny you should say that about the Mexico shows. I've had so much feedback this week about the show on Friday and our Mexican shows in general. Like, there's a very strong Hispanic stroke Mexican fan base of the zone subscribers in the U S and our Mexico shows do really well in terms of numbers on the platform. But there's also like the hardcore following in the UK also love the Mexican shows because they're like nonstop wars and they're kind of quite refreshing because you get to make fights like not easily, but they're just up for having wars and like fighting really competitive fights, which is great for us. So Matisse is really good. Like he fought on our, um, New Orleans card got a, a big win there and, you know, stopped a, a guy in the last round on a Bam Rodriguez card, a Mexican. He can punch. He's got a very good ring IQ as well. And it's a 50-50 fight against Rocky. And it's a brilliant card from top to bottom. So it's a great way to kickstart Mexican Independence Weekend. And then obviously Friday into Saturday with Canelo against Belanga. Yeah, if like me, you've got nothing better to do on your Friday night, uh, tune in. Let's talk Canelo Belanga. You've been on both sides of the promotional uh, matchups when it comes to Canelo. Does the buzz feel there in Las Vegas for this fight? I mean, Edgar Blank is up there with the best super middleweights in the world, but I think every Canelo fight that's not David Benavidez just sort of gets yeah. that shadow hanging over it. What's the buzz like in Vegas I, for this one? The buzz is great. You know, grand arrivals were rammed. You know, I think they've sold out completely at the T-Mobile. And I think if you, I appreciate people want the David Benavidez fight, but if you take Benavidez out of the mix, like Belanga's the best opponent out there. You know, he's undefeated. He's a mandatory challenger. He's Puerto Rican. Like he gives it the big one. He wants to be a superstar. He will roll the dice. He's a puncher. So I think it's a really good fight. And, you know, I've been on the, the AMB side of many Canelo Alvarez fights. And this is just another young fighter trying to, dethrone the king and uh it's going to be an interesting watch i think i think it'll be a great fight we're two days out obviously edgar has headline shows before he's had that big promotional push but how do you feel as fight night gets closer he's soaking this all and it's a huge night for him on saturday yeah i think that's one of the biggest um challenges when you fight canelo it's a bit like you know when you talk about aj and dubois next week same kind of thing like you've got to take everything that comes with fight week in your stride and then when you walk out, you've got to take the pressure of knowing, you know, the cauldron of noise and and the moment and you stand and you look in the other corner and it's Canelo Alvarez. And it's like, fucking hell. Like you, at that point, you either go, or you go, yes, this is my moment. I've wanted this for so long. And you go out and you raise your level in that moment. Do you know what I mean? And And I think that's, you know, a very important part of how he does in this fight, you know, um, if he can keep his composure, I think he's got a great chance, but he is fighting one of the all time greats, but how long can Canelo keep going at that level? You know, he hasn't had a stoppage in five fights. I think his output has slowed. And I think that he's just not, you know, he don't really try and get people out of there anymore, you know, unless he can hurt them with a shot and jump all over them quickly. And I think if you can be, if you can have a decent output and you can box smart, I think you've got a chance. And, you know, the, the, obviously the, the cream of that strategy and that, that performance was what Dimitri Bivol did. He never loaded up. He never really hurt him. He never tried to trade with him and land massive shots. He just outboxed him and he, he had a really good output, punch output to win rounds. And I just want to ask you, this isn't really 
relevant to what's going on at the minute. But came up on my YouTube the other day, the uh, press conference for Amir Khan versus Paul McCluskey. Is this going quite a way back now? Would that have been your first dealings with uh, Oscar De La Hoya? Yeah, it was wild, that was, because I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, right? No idea. I mean, you're talking about 15 years ago? 14, yeah, I'd, have, I'd have been 12 and I'm 27 yeah. now. So There you go. So 15 years ago. And we had a fight with Paul McCloskey against Amir Khan and they messed up the undercard or something and Sky took it off pay-per-view. And I think they said to Amir Khan, we're just going to put it on Sky Sports 1. And Amir said, no, it's got to be pay-per-view. We'll do our own thing. And they took it to prime time at the time, right? And obviously we were thinking, fuck, like, we've got this massive fight on Sky Box Office. Now we're on prime time. And then I turned up at the presser and Oscar de la Hoya kind of flew in. And he was giving this big speech about how this is so similar to when he left HBO and joined Showtime. And I was like, hang on a minute, you're telling me that... Amir Khan leaving Sky to go on prime time. He's like, you leaving HBO for Showtime. Like, you lot. I, I really went into probably one of the reasons why he still don't like me. But I was shaking like a leaf because I had no fucking clue what I was doing. I was just like, I'm just going for it. And I'm like, I was sitting on my hands because like I knew if I brought them up here, they'd be like that, you know? And it was, it was wild. If you haven't watched it, watch it back. It's fucking hilarious. Well, I just, they came up and I thought I'd ask you when I got the chance. Let's talk AJ Dubois. I know I've seen you've done a couple of interviews already addressing the comments from Anthony Fowler. Um, just, I remember when Dubois turned over professional, Frank Warren and the people around Queensbury then would bring up this sparring story with AJ and we heard different iterations of it, but it hasn't really been brought up from their side of things too much in the build-up, even in the back and forth between AJ and Dubois and Frank and yourself, obviously, when you had the face-off. Do you think that's in part due to Philip Hergovic bringing up the sparring with Dubois and then we saw what that happened? Really? Do you think it's not relevant? Like spar yeah, sparring, sparring. You know, you've got to understand, like, you know, when, when you're sparring up in Sheffield, like, there's so many things that you have to take into consideration, which we, like, you don't know. And I'm not, not even talking about that spar. Like, you got to travel up to Sheffield, right? were they even training for a tournament or was it just like no one was really fit? Like, I, I have no idea. So that's why, not in that instance, but in general sparring stories, I don't take a lot from it. Now, obviously, if you do get one up on someone psychologically, maybe that can help. But when it first happened and when they signed Dubois, the narrative that was being spun was that Dubois flattened AJ in sparring and he was out, you know, like carried out of the ring. And, you know, now all of a sudden we're finding that he rocked him with a left hook. AJ had a little stroll around the ring and then they carried on sparring. Like, you know, obviously people like Rob McCracken, if you get badly hurt in sparring, you do not carry on the spa. The fact that they carried on the spa tells you everything that you need to know about how hurt he was. I'm sure he has been buzzed in sparring, not just by Daniel Dubois, but by various different people because they're big heavyweight lumps. And when you get it clean on the chin, that happens. It doesn't matter whether you're Usyk, Tyson Fury. I mean, you know, the stories is that Bacoli flattened Usyk in sparring. It's one of Billy Nelson's favourites, you know? Like, maybe he did. I don't know. But could he beat him in a fight? I don't think so. But so I think that there's a narrative to kind of try and build, not from the Dubois team, by the way, but to build Dubois' chances in this fight. But you don't need to because he's got a chance in this fight. He's a really good fighter and he's on a good run and he's very dangerous in this fight. And, and AJ is prepared accordingly. Just sticking with AJ, um, I've seen you say you still believe he can become undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. If Tyson Fury was to lose to Alexander Yusik and AJ was to prevail against Dubois, would you pursue the Fury fight still? I mean, that would make, you'd have to well, go with Dubois. I mean, yeah, look, AJ would want to fight Usyk. You know, I think we've always had a dream for AJ to be undisputed. I mean, we chased it for long enough. And, you know, you look back at the decisions in the past and you kind of think, should we have fought Usyk? Right? We know that style-wise... 
it was never the greatest fight for AJ. He wasn't really firing with his team at the time. But we were that desperate to be undisputed that we had to fight our mandatory. And like when we got beat by Usyk, everyone was going, oh, you idiots for fighting him. Like, why did you fight him? It's like, well, what sort of game is it if you're just giving up belts, like to avoid people? And I think AJ should be credited for that, in all honesty. But if he beats Dubois, the only thing he will want to do is to fight for undisputed. And if that's against Usyk, like I've got to tell you, Ben Davidson and Lee Wiley, they love the Usyk fight for AJ now. You know, of course, uh, you know, it is a tough fight, but ultimately that's the aim to become undisputed. I've seen uh, Frotch has put another video up uh, a couple of hours ago. He says AJ should forget about becoming undisputed. Never going to be this sick. Well, look, I mean, never expect Carl to be back in Anthony Joshua, but it doesn't really matter what Carl Frotch says. You know, we we have a dream internally for him to be undisputed. I believe he can beat Usyk in this form. And I know he can beat Tyson Fury in this form. But he's got to beat Daniel Dubois first. Might might be the toughest one out of all of them. Who knows? We'll see under the arches next Saturday. Underneath the arches. Cannot wait. Last one, Eric. Appreciate you very busy over there. Now, this is from the... According to boxing Twitter page, oh, well, not, it must be true then. <laughs> I'm not too familiar with these <laughs> lads, but uh, big claim from them. They said we're hearing Matchroom could be releasing Boots Ennis from his contract with them. Wait, um, did you see my response for that? I did reply. Then, no, yeah. I'm not what, what, what fucking planet are these people on? Like, we've just signed, in my opinion, one of the top pound for pound fighters. In the world, right? We have just done 15,000 tickets in Philadelphia. What On what planet would I be releasing Boots Ennis for the contract? I'm so fucking over the moon that Boots Ennis is part of Matron. These Twitter accounts. And you know how many people have asked me if that's true? Like, I, Twitter is frightening. So, No. Absolutely not. He's a massive part of our team. And I hope that he spends the rest of his career with Matrim and his next fight will be announced next week in November. I know I said last one, just quick word on the Shakur Stevenson injury. Uh, is there going to do a coordinator replacement opponent in line or is he just likely to be the show? I think, yeah, I think that will that'll, um, exit the show and we'll work on another fight with Joe, with, with uh, Spencer Brown and Gold Star. Yeah, I feel for Joe because he was the one that put his hand up and said, yeah, I'm up for it. And obviously gutted for Shakur, um, but good operation yesterday. Get the rehab in and see him fight William Zapeda in early 2023. Eddie, thanks very much for the time. We'll let you go. Uh, no worries, mate. Vegas. Cheers, Ed. Thanks, Matt. Bye, mate.